Hello, welcome. My name is Robert Mazurek, and I warmly welcome you to the Mr. Battery channel. This episode is inspired by viewers, or rather by your inquiries, because for several months, or maybe even for several years, I have been receiving questions about whether it is possible to save an AGM battery, or whether it is possible to open those caps that are difficult to open since they are not designed to be opened. AGM batteries most commonly use VRL valves. These valves serve solely to allow the battery to operate under appropriate vacuum conditions during discharge and under appropriate overpressure conditions during charging, which positively influences the electrochemical reactions occurring between the electrolyte absorbed in these special sponge mats and the lead oxide and porous lead found on the plates, the first on the positive plate and the second on the negative plate. And that's enough of boring things for today. I was browsing the internet and noticed that many of you are showing that you can dig out those corks. I don't fully recommend the method of scooping out, some add electrolyte, others add some acid. Still, others show that it's enough to just add water. I will show you an experiment on a battery that is exactly five years old. A battery from 2016. 4416 stamped on the post. The code 658 indicates that it was produced by the 10 Corporation. This battery has an output voltage of 12.58V, a starting current of 471A according to EN standards, and an internal resistance of 5.4 mohm. The battery has an output voltage of 12.58 and a starting current of 471 amperes according to standard N. Resistance 540 milliohms, 440 milliohms, 440 milliohms, 440 milliohms. Sock at 73%, efficiency at 63%. This battery additionally weighed 22.7 kilos, exactly 22,700 gram. 22.7 kilo is exactly 22,700 gram. To make sure that I will check and test the battery before I add anything to it, before I do anything, I want to be certain about the parameters we are dealing with. Therefore, I will top up this battery. I will use a coulomb for this. I set the voltage to 14.7 when it comes to such charging voltage. I allow the maximum charging current to be at 15 amperes, but it didn't even appear there. For a moment it was quite high, and then it started to drop, dropping down according to Ohm's law. The higher the voltage rose, the more the current dropped, and this is how the battery charged for a total of 16 hours. After such a charge, the parameters are as follows, 1305V in terms of voltage. The cranking current rises to 509A, according to the EN standard. Remember that the temperature is consistently around 20 degrees. The internal resistance drops to 5.0 ohm and the state of charge, SOC, is 100%. The state of health, SOH, of the battery is 63%. I connect this battery to the alpha bata to check its capacity. I will check the capacity based on the measurement of reserve capacity, or RC, expressed in minutes. To check this, I load the battery with a current of 25 amperes. I check how long in minutes it will take for a voltage of 10.5 V to appear at the battery terminals which will indicate that the battery has discharged 100% of its capacity. This battery discharged to COM 10.5V over 1 hour and 51 minutes. And this will allow me to estimate the capacity of this battery. We know that it is 83.2% of my declaration, which in a standard conversion from RC to AH, that is to capacity expressed in ampere hours, gives us 66.56 ampere hours. So if we round up, we have 67 ampere hours of capacity for this battery. Now it is necessary to open these VRL valves. Go. During the opening, I used a more brutal method, a screwdriver and a hammer, since you can hook with a screwdriver or some other sharper tool. I managed to damage the valves in such a way that five of them were suitable for further use. Unfortunately, I had to drill and scoop out one. However, Vadim did it on another battery. He did it definitely more accurately, certainly definitely more economically. And he didn't damage any of these five. Here are five, but I took the sixth one for myself so that... This is what the VRL valve looks like. It is a plug that is blind on this side and does not release anything. Such a chimney, one could say, allows excess pressure to be released from the battery. But the VRLA valve primarily protects the battery from external atmospheric pressure and what exists or is present in the atmosphere from entering the interior of the battery. As I mentioned earlier, for AGM batteries, pressure is extremely important, meaning that there should be a vacuum during discharge and overpressure during charging of the battery to accelerate the electrochemical reaction processes occurring within it. And now I looked inside this battery and discovered that it is indeed quite dry. It was evident from the mats on top that it would be worth adding a little water. So the question is, how much water should be added? In the case of a regular lead-acid battery with liquid electrolyte, there are specific places we know how much to add, but here, how much should be added? 
little much more or less so as not to disturb the electrochemical structure of the electrolyte absorbed in this special sponge mat. From my previous videos, the link is provided here. You know that sulfuric acid never actually evaporates from the electrolyte. It is always water that evaporates, therefore by replenishing. We have a chance to restore the proper fluid structure in this matrix, meaning it should resemble electrolyte more closely rather than being more acidic, resembling sulfuric acid. I decided to pour less than half of such a small measuring cup twice into each cell, and after pouring I placed this battery on the scale and it turned out that this battery weighs 23,186 grams, that is 1186 grams. I poured 472 ml of water into this battery, which is appropriate for the battery. It could be translated this way, for one cell it is 80 millis, that's less than half a glass, it's two-fifths of a glass, it's two-fifths. And such a battery, after checking its capacity, was discharged, meaning that sulfuric acid was present in the plates. The water that I poured into these special sponge mats has been absorbed, and I hope that during charging this water will combine with the acid that is currently in the sulfates on the plate, thus creating a suitable structure that resembles an electrolyte more closely. I connected this battery to charge at 14.7V in terms of voltage. I allowed this set to charge for 48 hours. And after charging for those 48 hours, I had some trips and outings, and the battery had just been sitting there a few days, three or four. And after these three or four days, we have the following parameters. Voltage 12.92 V. Look how nicely the starting current has increased. 6 and 39 amperes of starting current. How nicely the starting current has increased. SOC, or state of charge, is now at 100%. SOH, or state of health, is at 79, which has nicely increased from the initial 63 to 79 and the resistance has significantly dropped to 4.0 mom. Having the electrical parameters, I connected this battery again to the Alphabet Pro discharger to determine its capacity. I again loaded this battery with a current of 25 amperes. This battery discharged for a very similar time, for one hour and 50 minutes, which allowed me to determine its capacity converted from RC, that is, from the reserve capacity of Elizabeth, to the capacity expressed in ampere hours C20, and it came out to 66 ampere hours. Didn't it come out to 66 hours? As for the capacity, there has been no increase. The electrical parameters of this battery have improved, meaning that the efficiency level resulting from the capacity has practically not changed, but the electrical parameters have changed. I might try to see if I can do something with this battery because I have it discharged again. I connected it again to the Coulomb 920, and this time I set the voltage to 14.9V. And the maximum charging current to 12A during this, it's about the current, the maximum charging current during this so that it is not higher and we will see what comes of it. And now what conclusions can be drawn from this film? First of all, if you are someone who likes to experiment, regardless of what you read in the comments under this video, if you have the desire and the means, have fun and take advantage of it because every experience you gain from your own example empirically will be an experience that builds your knowledge and skills. Remember to maintain a lot of safety while doing this because batteries are, after all, acid and lead. Of course, a lot of garbage and nonsense will spill over onto you and me in the process that Mr. The Battery, or rather Robert Mazurek, encourages saving AGMs, opening them up, but I do not advocate for that. Everything I know, everything I show you, everything I share, I learned myself based on my own experiences, so if you have the desire and the imagination, feel free to have fun as much as you can. However, if you don't have such desires or skills, as seen in this case without adding anything, I don't know if it would be possible to strengthen those electrical parameters. I know that if I had such a battery, if I were the owner of such a battery, and I charged it with an external power source, that is a rectifier or charger, twice a year before each winter and before each summer, surely this battery could last much longer because five years for AGM is not a remarkable period. It is clear that this battery will recover. I will seal this battery with these plugs. And if after this one more test that I will perform, something unusual comes up, I will share the results with you. However, if these parameters are quite similar to those I achieved here, then this battery will end up as one of our substitutes, and someone who comes to my company, Shviat Akumulatorov, whether on Grifinska or Santoka, if there is a need for a replacement AGM for him, he might be driving somewhere. If the AGM is working, then don't do it. Personally, I have an AGM in my car, and I won't do this in my car, where I need a fully functional battery, because I believe that the AGM battery has been calculated for a specific number of cycles, and it doesn't make sense to do this. However, what you will do with your time, your batteries, and your capabilities is the more enjoyable part of your life. Experiments, science, and acquiring knowledge in this way is wonderful and amazing. 
and also in reference to 16.2 v because I see that a large part of people completely misunderstood the message, I still refer to charging batteries with liquid electrolyte. I set 16.2V and set the current to the highest possible. I know what I'm doing. I am fully aware of the consequences. However, the film about the dark sides of 16.2V was aimed at those who are beginners in the field of charging their batteries, so they know that it sometimes comes with certain problems. That's it. Thank you for your attention. If you liked the video, remember to leave a like. It's important to subscribe, as this will definitely make YouTube recommend the Mr. Battery channel more. And we can reach more people with the knowledge gained from our experiments and experiences who will remember to charge their batteries before every winter and summer, which will definitely make them last much longer. Best regards from Szczecin. Take care. Bye.